Oh my god, I'm so excited. Disney Dreamlight Valley. Let's do it. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited to finally be playing this. Like, oh my god, I downloaded it on my Switch. Oh my god, hello vlog. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so excited. Oh my goodness, it's really happening. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so, so excited. <gasps> oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, we're going to do a new game, obviously. The sound effects. Like the soundtrack. Okay, here we are. Let me choose my avatar and I'll be right back. Merlin. Oh my goodness. goodness how stunning is this it is giving slight like beauty and the beast library vibes um oh my god it's raining how cute <gasps> i'm about to go visit remy i had three options you could choose uh, an island with a shy robot which i assume is wally um an ocean with a demigod which is Moana and then a, a restaurant with a little chef um, so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go visit Remy very oh hello <laughs> um very excited very very excited <gasps> oh my gosh it's exactly like out of the movie oh, oh he looks a little bit <laughs> mischievous eh? soundtrack also look at the and this is a very bad angle um look at the sky it's like bluey pinky like hues with clouds this really cute little um sort of flower hanging like herb hanging thing it's so cute
my name is Claudia and I'm so happy that you're here watching this video. Also, if you heard that, it's my chair. She is squeaking in full force. Um, I might get a new chair soon. I actually saw a really pretty pink office, like, study chair, so I may potentially get that. Um, I would just like to acknowledge my really cute little Halloween decorations, which I will be taking down. Um, it is the 1st of November today when I'm filming this. Um, so I'm officially ready to get into the Christmas spirit. But yeah, I do love these. They're little Mickey, like, face pumpkins. And then this is Jack Skellington. And, like, in between is a little bat. But you can't see the bat that well. But, yeah, I'm very excited for Christmas content. I'm so, so excited for Christmas content, you guys. Um, I'm going to do Vlogmas again this year. Um, hello. <laughs> Let me just turn the vibrate off um, because that's a group chat, so that's just going to keep going. I am very much excited for Christmas content. Um, like I said, I'm going to do Vlogmas again this year. Um, I'm probably going to do it the same as I did last year um, and just kind of vlog whenever I'm doing something Christmassy, when I have something Christmassy on, when I'm having like a Christmassy day. I'm not going to do it every single day because it's just like a lot of pressure um, and a lot of stress and I don't want to stress myself out and make Christmas like an unenjoyable time so yeah stay tuned for christmas content but also i want to acknowledge my hair not my chair squeaking in this pivotal moment pivotal is that the one i'm moving for i think so but anyway mom and i went to the hairdresser today um because we both got our hair done at the same time because we go to the same place i've been going to this hairdresser for years now um ever since i was like a flower girl in a wedding so she knows my hair i trust her with my hair and only her with my hair but um i was just gonna get a trim today because i really needed to get a trim and just get it cut so yeah, it's a bit shorter now love this length i did want to keep the length and still have it like long ish but it was almost like down to my waist like if i'm wearing high-waisted pants it, it's like touching the top of like high-waisted pants so it really needed a trim i could see it in the ends it had thinned out a little bit so it got like about a good inch off yeah and i was talking to my hairdresser about the 90s hairstyle i'll insert a few pictures just so you guys know what i'm talking about um but essentially the layers the curtain bangs a dyson air wrap hairstyle is essentially what i'm talking about and i was talking to her about it because i wanted to ask her like what she thinks of it if it would suit me and she was talking to me about it and she said like it would suit you of course but when you do that hairstyle you're like taking away a lot of hair because you're putting in so many layers like when you use that fine little like scissor comb thing um <laughs> hairdressers use, i don't know what it's called um it was like a mini sort of handheld like not electrical razor anyway like the dermaplaning brush anyway. um and she was saying you're taking out a lot of hair like when you put cut and not cut magazine sorry when you put layers in the bulk of your hair you're taking a lot sorry just got a formula one notification okay yes i'm in my formula one era now i spoke about it in a video or two um yeah anyway so yeah she's saying when you put layers in like the bulk of your hair not just the front when you put it through the bulk of your hair you're actually cutting a lot of hair out and for someone who has thick hair aka me it wouldn't be a wise choice because i would be losing a lot of hair and it just wouldn't be worth it in the long run but she said what she's been doing for a lot of girls recently is just doing face framing layers and doing the curtain bangs and um framing pieces at the front and she was like we could absolutely do that i wasn't intending on doing this today i just wanted to ask her i was just going to get a trim but she she was like she had time like mum had her color in she didn't have another person coming in till like three o'clock and she was like so do like we can do it today if you want i was like oh my God, yeah let's do it so anyway we ended up doing it today so all i did was she did some curtain bangs for me which i'm obsessed with they are so nice and they just face they frame my face like perfectly um and then she just did some like other front layers like some more face framing layers and that was it she didn't put any layers in the rest of my hair and i'm so happy that she mentioned that to me and she told me about that because she's been doing that for a lot of girls recently and i think it looks so nice it's so flattering i can't wait to do like hairstyles where i put my hair up and just have like the bangs um when i do it in a claw clip a bun like things like that 
So I'm very excited and very happy. I love the way she did the face framing pieces and the bangs. Like, it just looks so, so nice. Um, and I'm so happy with it. And then we styled it and I asked her about rollers because I tried Velcro rolls a while ago and I just did not work. Um, and so she showed me, like, what Velcro rollers to use. She actually put some in my hair for me. Um, and she showed me, like, the best way to do it. And you should also never apply them to wet hair. Just an FYI. I, I didn't when I tried it. I did it on dry hair. But when I was looking up tutorials and stuff, a lot of people said you can put in wet hair. Please don't. Like, please don't. Uh, you shouldn't. So, yeah. I'm going to buy some new, like, rollers. Um, and, yeah. I'm going to try them out. And then she also told me like what brush would be best to use if I want to do like the at home blowout style where you use like a cylinder brush against the hair dryer so she's going to order one of them for me because she was sold out at the moment because lots of girls have been buying them and then I'm going to do like at home blowouts which I'm very excited about but yeah until she gets that in I might just like buy one tomorrow because I'm going to the shops anyway so I might just buy one tomorrow to have and then she like curled the rest of my hair for me um, and it's like fallen a little bit now, but it looks really nice. I like a soft wave um, and that really suits like my hair and my like face shape and everything. But yeah, I'm so excited. I am obsessed. But yeah, I'm obsessed. I love this. I'm so happy with it. It's so nice. Like I haven't really done anything to my hair in a while. The last thing I did was just get a trim. But yeah, I'm really excited. I love it. Um, I'm so happy. Like... This is just so fun. Like, I haven't had bangs for ages. I did have like a fringe, like a straight fringe like that when I was little and I had a bob. But a fringe like that is just so hard to maintain because it goes so quickly and it literally covers your eyes. Like sometimes my mum would have to do it if we couldn't get into the hairdresser to see her. I'm so obsessed. I'm so happy. And yeah. But anyway, that is a little life update um and now i want to get into reading updates because i have a few to share with you so yeah first reading update this is my one of my currently readings um the, the ballad of songbirds and snakes by susan collins if you guys don't know this is the prequel to the hunger games books uh, and this follows snow's life as like a young teenager as a mentor for one of the um people in games i'm um, up to page 104, chapter 7. She is long. It's, I think, 517 pages when I checked. Um, I am really enjoying it. I'm buddy reading it with Nicole, um, who I've mentioned on my channel quite a few times. So we're buddy reading this together. We're kind of just taking our time with it because it is so long. Um, but we are really enjoying it. It's very good. She has re-entered Panem. I am in my Hunger Games era once again. I definitely feel like re-watching the movies and rereading the books. But I am really enjoying it. Nicole and I were talking about how obviously like Snow, we don't stand. He's not a good person. <laughs> but in this book, he hasn't done anything bad yet at this stage. So you almost kind of like grew for him, like you like him. But yeah, something big must happen that makes him the person that he is in the Hunger Games series. He is a, he's a very good villain. Like, like he's definitely one of my favourite villains. He's so well done. Like, wow, such, yeah. Um, obviously I don't like him and I don't like what he does in the Hunger Games books, but he's definitely a favourite villain of mine. But, yeah, something big has to happen in this book that turns him into the person he is in the Hunger Games. Uh, because at this stage he's very likeable like he honestly hasn't done anything wrong or done anything bad so yeah but really enjoying it so far like i said we're not like rushing or really powering through it too much we're just taking our time i also want to talk about a book i recently finished everything i know about love by dolly alderton this is incredible um i annotated as you can see or not really I really like to try and match the tabs to the colours in the cover. This was so good. Oh my goodness. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. This was fantastic. 
pick. I would highly recommend this. I love this book so much. It's definitely a favourite. It's up there with my favourite books of all time. Um, I definitely want to get around to watching the show at some stage. Um, let me know if you've watched the show and if you liked it because, yeah, I'm very interested in watching the show. But I really, really enjoyed this book. It, oh, it was just so refreshing and so nice to read a book where someone has the exact same views and thoughts as you when it comes to love and relationships and things like that it touches on i mean literally says it in the title party states friends jobs and life you know these are all the other things that are touched on in the book but it's also very refreshing to hear someone talk about adult friendships because you know as you grow up as you grow older some friendships may die out but you also find new friendships and create new memories and things and it's so refreshing because not many people oh hello she's out of focus <laughs> not many people I, there's a little focus box around Jack honestly iconic he deserves to be focused on um but yeah not many people talk about adult friendships and it was just really nice to read um such a good book I related to so much in here I'm gonna try um, and find you something like non-spoilery ish but it's more like a sort of like biography so I guess it's not really spoiler ish but it was incredible related to lots um I found that there were a lot of similarities between Dolly's life and mine and I just connected to the story her story like yeah there's lots of funny moments as well like she's so funny like some of the things she talks about she talks about MSN um which is really taking it back like I was on MSN in high school she went to an all girls high school same as me I went to an all girls high school like it was just refreshing and to hear her talk about dating and love and yeah it was just great and I think as well like when you're in your 20s um like mid 20s early 20s there's a lot of sort of stigma around you know you should have this this and this like sorted out you know you should have like a partner or you should be getting married or having kids like you should have you know a full-time job you should um know what you want you should like all of these kinds of things like there's such a stigma about around being like 20 up to 25 and like just mainly in your 20s I feel like a lot of people are very much like you should know what you want you should have your life sorted out you should have everything figured out by now you should be getting ready to settle down like you shouldn't be trying to find someone like you should have someone like it's just crazy and it's like hold on <laughs> people do things at their own pace like people do things at their own pace the world is very different and life is very different to what it was for a lot of these people that sort of I guess started this stigma talk like dating and life and relationships and jobs like it's very different to like I guess older times we'll say like years ago you know like people do things at their own pace there isn't that tradition anymore of like people having to have everything figured out by like your 20s when you're 25 etc like no and it's like I think some people almost think like oh if you don't like have your license if you don't have a partner if you don't have a full-time job like if you're just doing part-time and stuff like that um if you're not living on your own things like that people I think that say that it almost is like they're looking down on you or they make you feel bad about it. like you should be ashamed if you don't have this this and this like sorry what no hello we're back sorry oh my god what was the last thing I said okay well I forgot what the last thing I said was but I love this book would highly recommend um absolutely fabulous yeah just so refreshing such a good read um but let me find you some quotes that I liked oh I also did some little doodles I really really love this I'll have on the screen who I got inspiration from for these particular doodles um because yeah I did not come up with them myself but um yeah I've gotten a bit more creative with my annotating lately yeah this okay it's like the first sort of opening line romantic love is the most important and exciting thing in the entire world if you don't have it when you're a proper grown-up then you've failed like are you kidding it's literally like down to a t like literally if you don't have that if you don't have 
a life partner if you don't have a relationship, if you're not in a relationship, is looked down upon as like, oh, why? Like, what's wrong with you? It's clearly you. Like, you failed. And I was like, oh my god, yeah. This book, by the way, is just also about such a wonderful, wonderful group of girls and their friendship. Um, it mainly focuses on, like, Dolly and, like, her sort of main best friend, but it also includes the other girls in their group. But their friendship is just beautiful. It also talks about, like, how Dolly realised, like, as she got older, the most important love and romance is the love you have, you know, for yourself. Like, self-love and loving yourself. That's the most important, you know. Um, and I just think that's so beautiful. Yeah, and, like, she talks about how, is it me? Is that why I haven't found someone? Like, is that why this happened? You know, like, all these sorts of things. Um, and, like, it isn't due to her, but it's just... After a while, you start thinking, is it me? Like, you know. Um, she also talks about therapy. Um, and how therapy was just such an incredible tool and resource for her. Like, obviously, in the beginning, it was very hard. But as she got to the end um and even during the middle like of going to therapy she was like wow this is what i needed because she was saying in the book she talks about like how she was one of those people that was like no like i don't need it like it's fine like you know it's expensive like i'll be fine and then you know she went and she was like yeah wow i need it um and i think that's just so important to talk about because therapy is such an incredible tool and resource um, and I'm so glad that she touched on it in her book. This, what her therapist said to her, at least talking about how she feels like shit all the time. She's like, no one would know that anything is wrong with me from the outside. I feel, sh I just feel shit all the time. And isn't that so true? Like some of the people that are the saddest or have like anxiety and depression, they look the happiest on the outside. Or like you just couldn't tell that they're really going through something. And then her therapist says, you feel like you're going to fall because you're broken into a hundred different floating pieces you're all over the place you've got no routine you don't know how to be with yourself like whoa <sighs> yeah like just her writing the way she talks about her experiences like then she says so that's why i was there the penny dropped i thought i had a fear of falling but i really just didn't know who i was this overwhelming anxiety had been in the post for a while and it had finally arrived flooded through the letterbox and landed on my feet like are you kidding oh my god just beautiful, beautiful moments of friendship. Um, like, she's talking about her friendship between her and Farley. That's right. She says, A reminder that no matter what we lose, no matter how uncertain and unpredictable life gets, some people really do walk next to you forever. Like, that's amazing. Like, oh my god. And I just think that's such a beautiful quote, like, for friendship and for a lot of things. Yeah, I just, I couldn't recommend this book even more like oh my god the rain it has literally been raining non-stop today we're in spring right now in australia and it's just been winter today like winter weather perfect for reading though not gonna lie yeah it's just stunning like she talks about her friendship with farley and you know, I feel like with friendships, especially for girls, like, you have platonic soulmates. Like, I feel like some of my best friends are my soulmates. Um, like, oh, you know, yeah, I just, yeah, it's stunning. I would highly recommend this book. Like this page here, page 305. Um, this, I mean, I love my little annotations on this page, but this is basically talking about how self-love is the most important kind of romance. And I loved this. I don't need any words or looks or comments from a man to believe I'm visible, to believe I'm here. I don't need to run away from discomfort and into a male eye line. That's not why I come alive. That's not where I come alive, sorry. She says, because I am enough, my heart is enough. Are you kidding? I am whole and complete. I will never run out and I am more than enough. Like, oh my god, it's just stunning. She's like, I, I need to read this to you because this is just absolutely beautiful. 
My early morning walks and my late night baths are enough. My loud laugh at the pub is enough. My piercing whistle, my singing in the shower, my double jointed toes are enough. I'm a, just a pulled pint with a good frothy head on it. I'm my own universe, a galaxy, a solar system. I'm the warm up act, the main event and the backing singers. And if this is it, if this is all there is, just me and the trees and the sky and the seas, I now know that that's enough. I stop it. I actually got emotional when I was reading this book. Because there are quite a few sad moments, but this particular piece as well, I was like, oh. It's so relatable. Like, so relatable. Um, yeah, just such a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, there's also like some fun recipes in here, by the way. Yeah, I just absolutely love it. I just, yeah, it's stunning. Also, there's a beautiful, beautiful quote on page 328. Should I? Yeah, I'll read this one to you as well. To lower your heart rate and drift off on nights when sleep feels impossible. Dream of all the adventures that lie ahead of you and the distances you've traveled so far. Wrap your arms tightly around your body. And as you hold yourself, hold this one thought in your head. I've got you. Like, are you kidding? Oh, it's just stunning. I absolutely adore this book. I have nothing bad to say about it. I would highly recommend it. Um, yeah, sorry, I spoke about this book for quite a long time, but I just needed to share it. <laughs> now, oh, ooh, the other book that I'm currently reading, which I started towards the end of October because it's on my October TBR, is A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. I really like Crystal Sutherland. Um, I love her book House of Hollow. That's so good, so gripping. Um, and so I wanted to pick this up for October love this cover it's absolutely stunning it's in the beautiful same like illustration art style as the house of hollow cover i'm really enjoying it i'm at page 52 what chapter is this uh chapter six but yeah thoroughly enjoying this there's like a side of romance as well which is really fun and yeah i'm really enjoying it I, why, what, what's this <laughs> i also found out that she's actually australian so i'm so happy to be supporting an australian author um, but yeah, would highly recommend this. It's a really fun, easy read. Um, I am like reading through it quite quickly. So I'm hoping to read a little bit more tonight. And the weather is also very like good reading weather. Now, quick mini book haul. I want to show you guys the book I picked up today. I've been meaning to read this book for such a long time. I saw Chloe and Caitlin here on booktube talking about it ages ago. Um, and I just never got around to buying it. Um, and at the time they were talking about it, it was just self-published, but now it's actually been picked up by a publisher, which is very exciting. So a lot more people are getting their hands on it. Um, and I do really like the cover that the, that has come out um, with the publishing company. When it was self-published, it had a different cover, which I'll see if I can find and I'll put it on the screen to show you. But this is the cover uh this is a diary of blood by st gibson um i'm gonna remove this it just i got it from the bookstore harry harthog um uh, harthog sorry um and it's a staff pick but that's a removable sticker thank god i checked that it was removable before i bought it um but yeah i do actually really like this cover um and the spine is really nice in the back but so excited to read this also the dedication I remember when Chloe and Caitlin spoke about it and Chloe read the dedication out loud on her YouTube video and I was like, oh, that hits like different. To those who escaped a love like death and to those still caught in its grasp, you are the heroes of this story. Oh my God. Um, also bear in mind, um, there's an author's note with um, trigger warnings which I think is so so important to put in books so yeah there's some trigger warnings um, if you know to just look at before you pick it up in case any of those things um, like may affect you um, but yeah I'm very excited to read this it's like a vampire love story as well like are you kidding so yeah I'm hoping to read this quite soon I haven't made my November like TBR November hopefuls list yet I also need to do my November spread in my reading bullet journal, but I don't know what theme to do yet. So it's all happening. 
it's all happening but yes i'm very excited to read this but yeah that's the book that i picked up today um there's a few other new books that i have bought recently but i want to film a book haul so i'm gonna keep you in suspense for a little bit i'm very excited about the other books i'm just looking at them now um but yeah anyway i think that's all the little reading updates and things i wanted to get to i think they're all the reading updates i don't remember if i touched on one italian summer by rebecca surly I don't know if I touched on it, but I listened to the audiobook. I finished it a little while ago. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. It was heartbreaking and hopeful and beautiful and, oh, just such an incredible story. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's also narrated by the one and only Lorelai Gilmore. Are you kidding? Uh, yes. So Lauren Graham narrates it and it was amazing. There was a little Lorelai Gilmore quote reference in the beginning before the book starts. Um, and I just need her to narrate more audiobooks because it's stunning. Um, I think I'm going to watch some Gilmore Girls tonight, like the year in the life. Mm. Yeah, I might do some popcorn. It's a vibe. Uh, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that audiobook. Would highly recommend listening to it. Um, I got through it pretty quickly. I also like took my time with it as well because it was just such a beautiful story. There are my reading updates. I'm probably going to end the vlog here. But yeah, I hope you are all well. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you are. I hope you had a happy Halloween if you celebrate Halloween. Um, but I think that's all from me. I'm sorry. I just keep looking at my hair. Like, she's truly obsessed. Oh, my battery icon is flashing. It's telling me to wrap up. Um, but yeah. I hope you're all well. Thank you for watching this vlog. And if you've stuck around to the end, I love you guys. <laughs> and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. What's it like to stay in a cake?